when I voted in. Okay. Okay. I, as far as I know. Okay. It's five o'clock. We'll call the meeting of the bylaw charter review committee to order June 14th, 2022. Uh, we have a couple of guests tonight to talk over capital outlay plan, Rich Larios and Joe Power. Rich, do you know everybody here? No, I don't. This is Carol Thayer, Hi. Anita Doucette, and Deb Cementa. Deb Cementa. Our now, how are we spelling your, our, our fifth one? Oh, uh, Ray's Our, not here. Ray's not here tonight. He's got knee problems. Oh, my That's right. Please. L A R I O S. Thank you okay. very much. Richard. Is Thank that Richard with an R? No. Thank you. you oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> is it Joe and Jay? I think she okay. has. First is uh, public the comment, and since we just have guests and no public, uh, I assume there's no public comment. Do you have an extra agenda? Yes, extra everything here. Oh, good. Um, as a matter of fact, take one of these, too, and pass one down to Joe. Uh, first order of business is to approve the minutes of April 19th, 2022. Joe, do you need an agenda? So moved. I have one. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded to approve the April 19th, 2022 agenda. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So, new business. Uh, is a conversation tonight with Rich Larios, Chairman of the Capital Outlay Committee, and Joe Powers, Town Administrator, regarding the Capital Outlay Plan. And I guess I would maybe start off with your view of what it is now and how it's working for you. Um, I know you have some opinions. Oh, I do. Have thank you for inviting me. Well, thank you for coming. <clears throat> I don't have any opinions yet. Okay. okay. Uh, we're going, I, I've been the chairman 12 years, 13 years. So, um, and we've gone through multiple town administrators. The plan actually belongs and is administered by the town administrator. Uh, the makeup of the committee is four or five committees that have representation. Finance has two. The town administrator has two, planning has one, and then there's two more. It's, it's the same as your 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, that hasn't changed. Um, and the Board of Selectmen select two. So we have, we don't have a full cadre right now. Um, I want to say that the members have aged out. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have longevity mm -hmm. is, is one of the assets that the committee carries. And um, we, this past year, we, we lost Joe McParland, mm -hmm. um, longtime chairman was Pete Watson. So we have a number of Adam Revol and, and pretty knowledgeable guys from, from the town. Um, we have had as I said, a number of town administrators who look at the capital outlay plan differently. We've gone through five iterations of what they think they, they should carry. Um, fortunately, to my left, Mr. Powers has been the most aggressive in terms of matching what we require, what has to be done to what the Commonwealth requires through its Department of Revenue, um, which is a good thing. It, it, it helps us define what's happening. We need, I think, some um, renewed efforts in the front end, getting it to a position where it can be shared with the Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen. And that pretty much matches this 30-year plan in terms of dates. Um, I think the charter says by early January, mm -hmm. it has to go to approval at some level. Uh, the big difference on this one, this example, if you were reading it, it speaks to a a number of $100,000 as a uh, capital outlay expenditure. Um, it is $50,000, right. and it is 
50 and more, 50 and greater, which I'm assuming that is somewhere in the charter or somewhere. We work with 50 and greater. Well, I think the language that we finally settled on at this town meeting when all was said and done is pretty close to what we originally had 30 years ago. This is 100. Other than the amount. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, I mean, uh, because somewhere in between that and this, it changed. It was changed in the charter to. 50. Yeah, with. About five years ago. Well, that and also the process to amend it and. Yeah, I yeah, think the, the whole thing, it got very messy there for a while. At least and that's. It's still messy, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Um, the planning effort is not the five people or the seven people on the committee. It's the result of the town administrator generating documentation to each department and committee or whatever needs the money to ask for money, anything greater than $50,000, and when they want to spend it, and does it make sense mm -hmm. in layman's terms. Real simple. Um, it is not an effort. I'm an MBA. We have CPAs. We don't talk in our jargon. We, we, we really want to say, this is what has to be spent. Does it make sense to be spent here, here, or here? And it, it's like a, a, a budget at home. I, I mean, I can't make it any simpler. It's, if, you're gonna, if you need a new roof, do you need it today, tomorrow, or next year? And when do you want to budget for it? And when do you, when do you think you have to go to the bank to borrow the money if you don't have it? It's it's that simple, and um, it gets complicated when you have to find out well, what what bucket does it come out of? Okay, who needs to approve it? Um, are there alternatives of getting the money? Um, are you sure it's going to be in the second year or the third year? Is it going to be greater? in the second or third year. Um, my thought is it's worked well in the past. Um, I have some issues myself in trying to justify when, like, the fire department needs a new ambulance of, for emergency purposes in three years from now, and then they move it forward and they said, well, one broke and we need it quickly. Or, hey, you know, right now the cost of living or the cost of goods have gone up 58%. And remember that number we gave you of 400,000? It is now 520,000. And that we have to, it's legitimate. They've done their homework, and yet we have to take it to town meeting to change. I, I'm, I'm not real sure if it's the dollars need to change, that you need a new vote, or where it's being asked to change, like from the third year to second year, or third year, fourth year. Can I help you with that? Sure you can. The original point and purpose of this, um, I was on the Board of Selectmen at the time. Dana DaCosta was involved in creating this. <laughs> Carol was, I think, chairman of the Finance Committee at that time. And the problem that led up to this was that you would get your plan out for town meeting and then some department would come bombing in and jump over everybody else. So there was no coherent plan. And if it happened to be a popular department like the fire department jumping over another department, which wasn't quite so popular, uh, town meeting would come out completely different from what you had planned. So the thought behind it was to have a five-year plan established the money is only a placeholder. It's a plug. It's not intended to be voted. The money is voted in the article that establishes the capital outlay plan. The money is voted later in articles. So what the effort was was to try to bring some organization into the process, also to try to flatten out the, t the curve as far as the borrowing was concerned so you wouldn't have six projects in one year and no projects in the following year. 
it's impossible to know when you're making a five-year plan like this what the cost is going to be down the road. So that's an estimate. And you ask for your money in an article in that year. The other thought behind it was, and this I think happened a couple of times, is that yes, we, we asked for a two-thirds vote for the out years to change them. But if the cause is just and the town is behind it, they're going to vote that. And they have to vote the money anyway. So it's not as if you have you, you could change the capital outlay plan without a vote of town meeting because you still need them to vote the money in any given year. So is that making any sense to you? It does. Um, we've been with Joe. We have been more micromanaged now where there's a difference between the capital budget and the capital plan. Mm -hmm. What we voted for was the capital budget, which is the coming year. Yep, that the capital budget is 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 the capital plan. It's part of the plan. Well, the budget it's is the first year of the plan. Right. And we voted at town meeting the capital budget in within the, the capital plan in the year one. Yes. Right. And those are the articles. Right. They match every article matches a numeric request. Correct. In yeah. the first year. Yeah. The issue that I'm going to have. The capital, the committee is going to have, is trying to justify changes and expect or hope that there's not too many changes in the plan, the five years, to really confuse town meeting. I don't it's, think it's, town meeting is quite that easily confused. It operated very, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, very well for a long, long time before changes were made to it. This was a very successful approach to this for a oh, lot, I'm not, I'm lot not of years. I'm not it's not, but I think when you, you start throwing curveballs by saying we really are concerned about the first year and the out years where you have to make changes, mm -hmm. we have the finance department. Forget the finance committee. I was vice chairman of the finance committee. Hmm. That is not going to justify what the finance department doesn't tell you in, ter in terms of cash flow and debt relief. Those two things are going to make the entire plan work. Mm -hmm. And it's the changes are going to be really relegated to the, excuse me, to the account, to the town account. So I'm not saying that it won't work because we haven't tried it, mm. but I, I expect that the capital outlay is going to, the committee, in, in conjunction with the finance committee, work closely to make it happen. That's a good and thing. And I think yeah. the, the first thing that, that we got to make <coughs> sense was have, having Peter come back and the cost to come back. Well, Dana was one of the uh, authors oh, well, of the I, original, so he with, knows. Uh, yeah, he knows yeah, well. I mean, uh, yeah. I was there with him. Yeah. And he sat. He has sat on both committees. Mm -hmm. And if and, and in fact, we got a new lady, Martha. Martha Donovan. Yep. She wanted to know historically what's happened. Mm -hmm. I said, go call Dana. I gave him his number. Called Dana. Dana, can you talk to this lady mm -hmm. and explain to her historically? where we've been, what have been the big issues, the school, whatever it was, and how it affected each committee, because he has sat on both committees. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm just speculating that everything will be fine, but. I think it will be. Yeah, I, I hope. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the question is, who do you turn to if it goes wrong? And I don't want to take the blame well, the of capital, the capital outlay. The capital plan, as a plan is fairly simple in and of itself. It requires knowing what the debt is, knowing how you would like to spread it out, knowing that you've got a water sewer thing coming up that's going to completely throw everything into, you know, totally, totally skew the equation at some point. But the, again, the, the point was to try to keep the borrowing flat as you retire debt to take on new debt and try to keep it as flat as possible. But not every request is debt. 
well, free that, cash. that's true. So you have to eliminate that. And today's environment is far different than years before. We've had, we've had a, a plus in capital or mm -hmm. free cash, sometimes too much in there where it could have, some of the debt could be reduced. And, and it's, it, we've had some real good financial minds working on the algorithms that go with what goes out here, what goes here, what pot does it come out of, or what pot does it go into, kind of thing. So my fear is that the committees themselves are not the be all in terms of recommendations unless they get good information 100%. from the experts. And like I said, we have tried, you know, trying to explain to people who sit on committees who aren't financially oriented, and they, and that's fine. That's fine. They depend on, you know, the presentations and understanding what, what's happening, and a lot of it currently goes to my left. It's his responsibility to present the capital outlay mm -hmm. pl plan that has a budget that makes sense in the first year to make the plan take the first step to get to the end. That's okay. And with everybody new, I mean, we're down to four people. Out of how many? We had seven. We're down to five. Uh, you have a five-member board. There's a vacancy, as you mentioned, from the planning board. And um, with Bruce Nightingale's uh, recent um, retirement, so to speak, from the uh, capital outlay, there's one from the Board of Selectmen. So I've already informed the interview committee of the Board of Selectmen that they should be on the lookout for um, one more of their representatives to make the committee hall, and we're working with the planning department to get uh, the planning board to identify an individual as well. I guess what I just want to get back to just a little bit is, sure. is that it's not necessarily talking solely about debt. Part of the goal was to keep the debt level flat. But the other was that you know any capital project over well at the time it was 100 now it's 50, um, regardless of the funding source should be in the plan. That's and the and the numbers in the plan are basically just estimates. It's the article eventually that will speak to the actual amount when we get to that project. I guess it's. The capital budget's a whole different animal, and that's, again, that's Joe, basically. Mm -hmm. The budget is the first year with the articles. But the plan is what the budget is based on. No. Yes. No. You could have, you could have expenditure in the first year, and it goes away. It doesn't affect the plan. The plan goes on. The plan has four more years built into it. But the first year of the plan is what you plan your budget around in that first year of town Correct. meeting. But okay. It, yeah, at the, it may affect the second year, third year, but if it's a single, if it's a single expense, right, it goes away. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. And we're, I think we're I think we're saying the same thing differently. Yeah, we are. It's just you know, I, I, the issue is if somebody has an expenditure that should be moved should be up. On, should be on the plan, then it makes the plan. But we get, we may get two to one. We may get two requests for one, mm -hmm. art, one article to be made. In other words, we're not going to say yes to every request. And that's the difference of trying to decipher or filter the, the decision. The decision as to what to include in the plan. It does it go. In year 23, or does it go in 24? Mm -hmm. Does it make a difference? Right. If if you take in the account of spreading debt level, then you're trying to match where does something drop and something can be fit in. Which we know can't always happen. Correct. But our problem is we have some really big, like you said, mm -hmm. wastewater. Well, there are going to be spikes, and there's no way around it. Right. Right. right, and uh, fortunately, excuse me. Fortunately, there, you know, maybe the rev—I don't know—the Department of Revenue may have exceptions or 
you know more about that than I. Anyhow, Joe, your, your turn. That was an excellent segue, Mr. Chairman. Well, Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, good Got evening, off the folks. hook, did you? <laughs> yeah, I know now. <laughs> I didn't say that. Uh, <laughs> thanks for having me, but uh, it truly was a good segue because uh, Rich had uh, said at the top of his discussion that um, me working with them, them working with me, um, trying to get um, a cohesive plan together after COVID with changes coming that have been adopted at our last annual town election. Um, I told everybody that I was gonna go back to the basics and go back to the best practices. And I shared some documents. Does the committee have access to those? I don't have or? mine with me. <coughs> I copied them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, um, I did, I did not. State, local services. Uh, correct, yep. Yeah. And so when I say best yeah, practices, so. uh, Department of Revenue, Division of Local Services, um, has some great material and anything to do with financing. And so what I relied upon for the last cycle was their, their form um, because I think the form helped us transition to back to the five-year plan because the, the, the DLS, as they're called um, informally, um, looks at capital in, in a five-year cycle, if you will. So we went from seven to five. Uh, but within that best practice, you know, they've identified a lot of things that I think could be helpful. Now, the conversation you folks are having, um, and I, I know you know it, um, but I just made reference to, uh, in Chapter 9 of the Charter, Section 6, uh, talks in depth about the capital outlay plan. We now know it to be a five-year plan. But at present, capital outlay is defined within the Charter as the acquisition, construction, or renovation of buildings, equipment, or land having a total cost of $50,000 during any budget year and planning funds for any such capital outlay. There's a word missing there, or there are several words missing, because presently our existing um, charter reference is a total cost of $50,000. Now I know um, with the, and this is the original, is that what you were this referencing? This is 1992. Yep, mm -hmm. to talking about a total cost of 100,000. Mm -hmm. So that made sense in 1992. Um, if we factor in inflation and what $100,000 would be worth today, um, but, but a total cost of $50,000 doesn't make sense in okay. present time. And, and like I said, I think there's a phrase missing. Um, and, you know, that may have happened in uh, transition with the, the, the code provider, whatever the case may be. But having that discrepancy or that disconnect in the definition is another reason why I went to the best practices of the, the uh, Division of Local Services. So as an example, and, and I understand that you folks are, are probably interested in Chapter 9 um, because of your efforts that started a few years ago on modifying the plan and recent efforts to continue that. But as an example, or, or as a juxtaposition perhaps to what we have in Harwich, um, a sample of a capital bylaw that the Department of uh, Revenue puts out um, defines it a little bit differently. So they, they refer to uh, proposed capital projects and improvements involving major, non-reoccurring, tangible projects and assets, which are number one, are purchased or undertaken at intervals of not less than five years. So that's where their logic comes in with your capital, uh, as they call it, capital improvement program should have a five-year life cycle because your capital items should have at least a five-year life cycle. Um, and in fact, number two says, and have a useful life of at least five years. And number three in their definition, uh, and a cost of over $25,000. So I was struck by that. Um, and again, the conversation starts with you folks and, and others and happens within the town of Harwich. But if we're gonna um, renovate, for lack of a better phrase, our, our capital outlay uh, section of, of chapter nine, I would be motivated by looking at what the Department of Revenue looks at as the best practice and working from there. And then we can discuss, debate, argue, and come to compromise. And when I say we, I don't mean we, and we, I mean the town, mm -hmm. um, about what we want our thresholds and our definitions to be. Because to Rich's point at the outset, I thought it might be helpful to the Capital Outlay Committee, because I know it's helpful to me as an administrator, 
and you folks may already know this, but I've come to I learn it the hard way. Um, our charter requires me as town administrator to develop the budget. It mandates that the board of selectmen present it, but the key point on that is we have a finance director uh, role, but the charter says that the administrator shall prepare the comprehensive budget uh, for the year. Now, that's not something that I've seen in other towns. Regardless, I understand, I think, why it happens that way, and I fully embrace it. So knowing that the administrator has that responsibility from the charter, it dovetails, obviously, with a component of that being capital. So again, um, the way I work with my team, staff members, department heads, as well as committees, is let's look at the best way to do this. And so for me, we never run afoul if we recognize that the Division of Local Services is there specifically to help municipalities on any matters of municipal finance, but their mothership, so to speak, is the Department of Revenue, well, you can't go wrong if you say to your auditors, well, we're working off of material that was provided by the Department of Revenue. So it's not the end all be all. We get to fill in the blanks, so to speak, but I think it, it helps. And I'm hoping that this conversation this evening sort of leads to more conversations uh, in addition to your next agenda topic, um, where we revisit certainly the capital outlay plan because mm -hmm. there are things that we need to update, not the least of which is none of us understood that it was meant to be capital is 50,000 because there's nothing in the plan this year, nothing anticipated over the next four years that even comes to that dollar amount. And as we know, most of the dollar amounts far exceed $50,000. But if you're including that language, if we were to incorporate that into the charter, what, the, what, the language you just read. The sample language? Yes. Yep. That really ties it up in kind of a neat little bow. I believe so. Yes. And, and like I said, and thank you for that point, because we can talk about the words that make up the definitions. We can talk about the intervals of years, and we can talk about the dollar amount. But everything else is a nice, neat framework. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Well, it's good because then it matches the forms we're already using. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't, we, don't, we don't have the final word on this either, you know. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, would, you, would you suggest upping the amount that defines a capital outlay? Or just <clears throat> so to spur conversation, I wanted to start with the phrase over 25000 Because for me, it's not the dollar amount. It's, it's, if I could go back to it for a moment, um, major, so that I think tends to start limiting 25000 over $25,000 if we, if we understand what major is relating to a multi-million dollar uh, capital outlay plan in, year, in years one, um, if we also understand that it's a capital outlay plan within an overall operating budget of $73 million. So <coughs> major is going to have to be redefined. But beyond that, non-recurring, mm -hmm. tangible projects and assets. And one of the things that um, I promised Rich and the committee, and, and uh, I'm making a confession, I need to find the camera that I look into. <laughs> um, and I, I will get to it for the next cycle because it's embedded in the best practices, and that is first to present first to the Capital Outlay Committee, here is a list of all the assets we own, tangible, intangible, real property, and not. Mm -hmm. And we have that because we work with our um, Maya, the town's insurance agent, and every piece of property that we own up to a certain value is insured. So I don't think it would surprise you folks to know that we have um, in the order of almost 200 structures. So a smaller number for buildings, but sheds, bleachers, dugouts, you name it, by the way, my mind goes to baseball. Uh, this evening of your meeting is the Mariners uh, home opener at 630. Oh, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Spoiler alert, I really want to be there, so I'm going to try to wrap it up shortly. Well, we have to be um, out of here by 6.30 anyway, because the um, meeting room is needed at 7. I'll buy All right. <laughs> so, so when you, when you think <laughs> of that, you might just take it up on that, that personal property and structures may not bat an eyelash. Right. But if I also told you, and it is a little zinger that I put on the record during the Capitol Day, but if I told you we have almost one vehicle for every full-time employee, Ooh. 
that's something that the capital information needs to put out there. And I need to put it out there to be transparent. I need to put it out there, there to give the capital outlay committee the best information for them to make informed decisions to help me. And I have to put it out there because I'm gonna own it. Whether I own it at town meeting floor with a question mm -hmm. or I self-report, as we say in my family, tell on myself in advance, the sooner I give that information, the better off we'll be. And for me, I have said it before, and I think Rich knows this is not something new. I feel I have too many buildings under my span of control, not from a workflow process. We have more buildings than we have money. And you know that's a major part of the capital outlay plan. And I run contrary to what's known as the standard administrator or manager's mindset of get more buildings, get more people, get more budget, get more salary. I'd like to have it be I can run a more efficient operation and have the right number of buildings and properties. Having said that, we need to dispose of vehicles and be more mindful as we do it going forward. Now the good news of that, if you will, is because the charter requires me to do that comprehensive budget building and because I'm the chief personnel administrator, meaning most employees report to me, it makes it easy for me to communicate that amongst the team. Here's the deal. Here's what we have to do. But it was doing, it was rereading, um, and I want to emphasize that because this is not my first rodeo, um, certainly not in Harwich and not with regard to capital outlay, but I reread the materials two years ago knowing that, you know, as time goes on, more of this is going to be me and less of my predecessor, and no spoiler alert to say it's all on me now because we've, uh, the passage of time what are the best practices and when you read their forms and instructions which is the smaller booklet that I sent out they have some great material there they have great templates that I just need to fill in the blanks and so we have a more robust set of documents that capital outlay gets earlier in the cycle so they can be more aware and make more informed decision making and everybody's in tune with it so then as we the capital outlay committee and I evaluate requests that come in on the forms there's going to be a critical eye towards, all right, why do we need another vehicle? And I'm not opposed to vehicles, but if we have five that could be disposed of, couldn't we then turn those proceeds around and perhaps fund a portion of this? And we can do that. Mm -hmm. And to put it out there, Link Hooper and Kyle Edson, they do a great job of that with, with their fleet. They do a great job of saying, we've got, you know, say, five vehicles that we have no need for. They're surplus, so deal with it in the procurement manner but we do need this new vehicle on the road. I just need to incorporate that more town-wide and cover all of those vehicles because I was stunned, uh, and it's a tip of the cap to our former finance director, Carol Coppola, who said, do you ever look at and see how many vehicles we had? So I found the number, 176, I believe was the number at the time, and then I, for my own edification, looked up how many full-time employees do we have, and at the time, it was 212. That's too close of a number. Yeah, really. Because we never intended for every employee to have access to a vehicle, nor do they. Many of these vehicles are not simply vehicles. You know, one might be a boat or several be a boat, but they're under that schedule versus the property schedule. So for me, that's why it was extremely helpful to say, okay, I'm going to reevaluate. I'm going to challenge my assumptions um, because I'm inheriting a plan that I was not a part of. Um, and it's worked well for the town, but how can it work better? Well, sounds yeah. like a good yes. direction. Yeah, it certainly does. Uh, well, go ahead. In support of what Joe just said, uh, one of the uh, beliefs, I think the Finance Committee and the Board, and the Capital Outlay Committee, is uh, we, we don't need the buildings, and we have citizens and groups and so forth who just don't want to get rid of old assets. And it's, we bump into it every town meeting when we discuss a building or some piece of property that, I mean, they have value, but not useful value. Well, aside from Brooks Academy and the middle school, what other old assets are we talking about? Well, it comes up, the old firehouse. 
you, you look around. I don't have. I like to use proper addresses. Two hundred three Bank Street. Yeah, whatever. Five yeah. Bells Neck Road. Yeah, I mean, you, whatever you know. the address is on Queen Anne that used to be. The other thing is, there, different departments will buy assets and fund them differently, and that the police versus fire. The police expense, or they have in the past, expense their vehicles. Mm -hmm. One shot deals happens in a year, doesn't go under the capital plan. They just buy them, buy them as an expense, like buying an ice cream cone. Where, but by the DOR's definition, that wouldn't be in a capital plan. Oh, they have life. They could have life greater than five years. Except the police cars need to be bought every year, apparently. How does that what play? How does that play to, out? What we're accustomed to and what has to be done if we have to tighten our belts and get one more year out of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, three years should still be on the capital budget, a three-year term. They're depreciated over three years. The question is, do you depreciate it as an asset that quickly, or do you spread the life out and, and depreciate it longer? Especially if the, if the car is being used. Right. And if we're talking about police cruisers that have a useful life of three years as a police cruiser, that's why I made reference to Link and Kyle Edson. They then turn those around and we get at least two more years out of them mm -hmm. for other vehicles. Mm -hmm. So the acquisition of a motor vehicle whose primary use is public safety um, could still be used in the useful manner, just not public safety. Um, so to me, that's that's how it would fit into um, what is contemplated by the Commonwealth. Having said that, I think that's why other chiefs and other communities also say, if it's just three years and we don't know if we're going to get more out of that after the th three years are up, then it's an operating budget. Um, but you may know that I tried it in the operating budget, and the preference was to put it in capital. Mm -hmm. So if if we again, refine the plan and the definitions, we're going to have a better chance going forward of better articulating uh, definitions and expectations, I think. Anybody have any questions? No? Well, what about the, uh, I think one of the th things that we talked about the great length one of our meetings with you was the time frame. Do the dates that presently exist work or do they need to be adjusted? I think we'll get to that in the next segment, yeah. won't we? Generally, but I have an answer to the specific question. Okay. Um, no, I don't think they generally work, and yes, we could update them, and I can give you a specific yeah. example. Okay. Uh, within the current um, Section 6, it says 9-6-3, um, nine, nine the Town Administrator and the Capital Outlay Committee shall submit a five-year Capital Outlay Plan to a joint public meeting of the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee during the month of December of each year. Mm -hmm. That language is very restrictive. Mm -hmm. If you change the language to no later than December or no later than the end of December, um, if I move fast enough and everybody agrees, we could have it in November. But a strict reading right now of the Charter says that that must be held during the month of December. And I wouldn't necessarily argue with that if it was tied into other dates. Mm -hmm. But when you have that kind of language rather than, so for example, having a total cost of 50000 rather than saying no more than or no less than or over. Same thing with the date, no later than, no earlier than. That gives more flexibility where right now there's a rigidity that doesn't let us really try to create a plan if we wanted to start earlier. And I do want to emphasize, it is my fervent desire to start early um, just because I now know, and you know, we're coming out of COVID, so we're getting more into normal times, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, when we go back to normal, there's more pressure. It's not as easy to just throw together a remote meeting that, because people can make those because you don't know where they're at and what they're doing, but to, to be present and we can also say that the way that my yoga instructor says it, to be present, um, you know, adds a complexity to it. I want us to be present. Now, I also tell you that we have 
uh, 321 days until the annual town we meeting. We started the countdown already. I already <laughs> have, absolutely already have. And so I'll tell the team every now and then, and the team in this case is more often than our department heads, and say, would you believe we only have X number of days left? Because that's to May 1st, 2023. That's not to the date where it has to be in the Chronicle. That's not the date to where, it, you know, so when you back it out, we really have to have things wrapped up if we want to be mindful of all this January or February because then we can re then we can deal with snowstorms or weather impacts no other impacts like whatever happened in early March 2020 um, so we need more flexibility in the language historically um, we've been having a beginning date in September where the request forms are shipped out to the department heads and returned, I'm going to say October 1st. But anyway, between September and December, the committee would meet at least once a week, possibly twice a week, as we approach whatever the finished product. And it's a culling process where does this make sense? And every, com every department comes in with the request personally, and they explain what the request is, and then if we need a site visit, we do a site visit. During the summer, we've done this a number of years, you would get one of the buses from the community center, and those members who, like myself, from Washashore, apparently, from New Jersey, perhaps didn't know where the beach, whatever beach we were talking mm -hmm. about, or whatever jetty we we're talking about, mm -hmm. and historically, um, some some member of the committee would know exactly where we are. We'd get on the bus and we'd take a whole day and visit all the locations. I think you may remember maybe eight years ago there was a drainage issue on 124 north of Route 6. Mm -hmm. There was a drainage issue. Wow, we took a bus up there saw where the land had to be, you know, the, the neighbors were complaining and everything else. We did that, we went to um, the Red River Beach and, you know, where, where does the, the, uh, the new patchwork or where does new asphalt have to be put? And we all walked the entire length of the beach to make sure, are there any crevices that are, you know, gigantic where somebody's gonna get a flat tire? And we did that. So we took a, an honest approach of making things work. We started in September because you guys go on vacation. Mm -hmm. We call it a summer hiatus. You know, and the, the people are not on the Cape a lot. The people who live on the Cape, if they're smart, they leave the Cape during that time period, you know, and go elsewhere. But anyway, that's, that's the process. And if we can modify that and get it working better, mm -hmm. that helps us. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of the deadlines and dates changed and were moved later from when this was done. If you look back, I think December, the end of December was when the town administrator had to report to the budget report for selectmen. Now it's what, January? So there's a reference that says before the second Tuesday in February, the administrator shall present the comprehensive budget to the board. Yeah, so it's February. But it doesn't foreclose you from doing it earlier. And that's exactly what I said to the board two weeks ago. Maybe, I heard that. Maybe your committee right. can help our committee and, and finance. The caveat of presenting all this and getting the numbers to Joe, the caveat is all the number, numbers are still subject to change before town meeting. That's never going to change, is it? It's never going to change. So this this race we're going through, get it? it I remember we ch we changed a major number, and I forget which department, maybe fire. Right? An hour before town meeting, there was a million dollars added because something wasn't. They didn't put it in, and we had it. Not this year. No, no. This I'm saying it was. Well, we had something left out of tap of. Uh, our capital outlay articles this year. Yeah. 
for a particular yes, project. Yes, that was me. That was Brooks Academy. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I swear I thought it was on purpose, but never mind. Not at all, but we have a picture of that. <laughs> okay. But moving it earlier, I, I mean, part of what we saw at the end of the cycle this year was just this, this everything was pushed up against a wall. Right. And everything was done kind of last minute. And I thought after last year having that basically happen, that this was going to improve, but it didn't seem to get we, better. Do we, we need to push back some deadlines? We couldn't get people to attend meetings. I mean, that was right on the yeah, Capitol Hall side. On our right. side, yeah. we, people just could, wouldn't show. Yeah. I mean, they, you have, you can't put a gun to their head. They don't want to come. Then they should. Yeah. Then they yeah. should. Then they shouldn't be on the committee. But man, that's also why the focus now is making sure that the capital LA is at the seven it's members, yeah. because where we're at five members, two people can't make it because of a conflict. You're done. Right. But if you have the seven members, you can still power through it. And then the other part I'll put out there, um, because I, I I would like to think I, I've done a good job of owning it. Uh, and I absolutely own it, and that's why I track the time frame. And I've been saying to anyone that will listen since May uh, 2nd of this year that I've already started the process. And the department heads and I are already working on the budget, and we're going to work through that summer months and all that. Capital outlay is meeting uh, later this week to talk about some items before they have that, that hiatus. Mm -hmm. But a major milestone that was not met was that traditional meeting that one day in Saturday between the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee, mm -hmm. and both boards were aware of that as well, that had a major impact on the processes because that was a way to work within some of the disconnects of the charter where, okay, it's got here, there, and everywhere, but if we all agree to meet on one day in a weekend, we can get a lot more done. And you all and hear so, the same information at the correct. same time. Yeah, now, we still don't have a date for that joint meeting, but what we do have is continuation in the board and their leadership. Chairman McCaskill is coming over for another term, and we have new leadership for the Finance Committee and its former members, former chairs, mm -hmm. and Peter Hughes. So I, mm -hmm. if, if two people can come up with a date, it's Michael McCaskill and Peter Hughes. Okay. But at present, we don't have that date yet in the book. Uh, or the calendar, I should say, and I'm not publishing the calendar until we have that date. Should, right. should there and be a fixed date included in the charter somewhere, or a within kind of a time frame? Well, it that sort, of, it sort of talks about it already, and I'm not, uh, well, it wouldn't be in the Chapter 9 section that I no. have. Um, sorry, it would be Chapter 9, but it's not in the Capital section that I have. Um, but it does talk about the fact that, you know, the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee shall meet jointly and severally. And so I've told them my understanding of that is you have to come together at least once and each of you have to go do your things several times. Yeah. Well, again, now, again, you have I've, to do at least yeah. that, to your point earlier, Madam Chair, you have to do at least that. It doesn't mean you can't do more if you want to start with a joint meeting, which I don't think is such a bad idea, mm -hmm. and end with a joint well, meeting. It isn't a bad idea at all. Right. I mean, just lay out where you are, Correct. what the problems are to begin with. Yep. You know, and then yep. And the point, the point to that originally was you'd find certain department heads back in the day, I'm sure it doesn't happen anymore, would tell the Finance Committee one thing and tell the Board of Selectmen something entirely different. So we wanted to make sure that at some point we were all in the same room together and everybody was operating off the same sheet of music. And that was, that was the genesis of that. And it worked. Yeah. If we could do some revision to the capital outlay language and assuming that the rumors are correct that there's a fall town meeting being contemplated so it's not a rumor um, as much as was said at the annual town meeting if the town of chatham uh, adopted the monomoy regional agreement uh -huh. then um, and it's one of the last uh, items that carol and i covered our finance director at the time we're going to have a surplus of almost seven hundred thousand dollars, and we want to. We need to want to do something with that before we set our tax rate. So, for no other reason, that's a compelling reason to have a special town meeting. Now, that's why it's not a rumor. What we don't know yet is uh, 
Department of Early or Elementary and Secondary Education, AKA DESE. I've not been informed by the superintendent that DESE has said that these agreement changes are legitimate mm -hmm. and you may begin the fiscal year under this uh, operation. What I'm hoping is that sometime in early fiscal year 2023 and early in the first quarter they say that so that we can contemplate the special town meeting that we're thinking of for the end of September, early October. In the presence of our retired clerk, I'm always mindful that, you know, even numbered years, there's uh, primary elections, there's general elections, and now the bane of existence, and I can say that as a former clerk, early voting that goes with that. Yeah, right. So I want to be mindful that we're working around those landmarks, uh, sorry, milestones, um, to get that done. Milestones. So, thank you, exactly. Yeah. So not, and I meant to say landmines. Um, okay. <laughs> not a rumor, okay. just not a confirmed date yet. Okay. If we were to have a fall town meeting, I'm trying to remember, is there anything written anywhere that would pre prevent us from putting a charter amendment in that town meeting? So I that it could be ready for a vote in the spring? Other than... Other than... Um, I think the Board of Selectmen would be interested to see how many items must go before town meeting. And I know there's, uh, especially after the last two days that we had, that actually went three days, um, of our annual town meeting. I don't know what the appetite is for a robust warrant that may take more than one night. But, but there is but nothing other for, than that to... I, I don't think there's anything else that would get in the way of doing it if that were... Cor uh, correct. Yeah. Yep. I don't... I mean, charter changes don't usually provoke a lot of discussion. Well, no, I, probably not, especially yeah. if everybody's on board. I mean, yeah. if there's a disagreement, yep. that's a discussion, you know, that can go right. forever. Right. Well, the disagreement but if everybody's, if everybody's on board with the change and oh. wants to just get it done so we could get it on the ballot next year rather than yep. a year out, it would be great. Because I really think that language you've you've given us is needs to be there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I think it flashes things out Perfect nicely. Sense. Perfect sounds. Yeah. Sir. Oh, no, I'm good. Okay. Work with what I have. I mean, it's okay. well for the moment. I, I think you know the uh, once we have a full house, mm. it makes life a lot easier. Well, getting people to meetings makes life a lot easier, mm -hmm. too, and somehow if you have people who are consistently not at meetings or not willing to meet, then that's well, a whole different so discussion. There's, yeah. there's no history to say, yeah. you know, you, you knew when somebody's been there for seven years, they're going to be there. It might be a little late, but they're going to be, be there. there. Yeah. Uh, everybody is new. Everybody has their agenda. Um, fortunately, we... Uh, we got two new members from the Finance Committee. Cameron said, and uh, Mark Kelleher. Right, and um, I, I was on the Finance Committee when Mark was new. Um, I have nothing, I mean, it's fine. Yeah, so you're lacking, you're missing the Selectman's appointment and? Selectman's appointment that is, the term is expiring the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Um, so they should be able to turn that around. Um, John Eidman, um, before he went off to, to Brewster, he and I had a conversation, uh, and I just asked him if he could work with the chair of the planning board because it talks about a representative of. And so John made the note that it says the representative of and not from the planning board. <laughs> to which I said, do what you will, get us a name, we'll take it from there. Uh, we weren't able to finish that transaction. Anything else anybody wants to say or comment or ask about this particular agenda item? I think it's been a really productive conversation. Yeah, yes. I, think, oh, I think there's a, a whole lot better understanding perhaps in both directions yeah. as to, you know, what the intent is and what we may need to do to... And of course, um, we can update your committee. As we as as we progress, mm -hmm. and you can see what we're work how how we work it, and where we are in the calendar. Okay. Um, no, I think that's what we need. I mean, yeah. you have to tell us. Yeah, and I would if I'm invited. How to fix yeah. mechanics? You know, I yeah. mean, how to, it, what needs to be done to fix those. Things. 
Yeah. A lot of committees have liaisons between committees. Do we want to have one, some a point person? I think it's a wonderful idea. Yeah. You know, when I heard of the, of the changes two yeah. years ago, it was new to me. I sat on this thing like for 12 years. Well, we can we can certainly talk about that. We can't do anything about it tonight. But no, um, no, I'm just. But it would be if we had somebody who was. A direct contact for you, and maybe even could go to a couple of your meetings. Just oh, as you're more than more than welcome. Well, we can't have too many of us there because then we'll have to post. No, you, no, we can we can make it a liaison or yeah, you know somebody. Uh, All right, well, we'll, see. we'll work on that. Yeah. Good. yeah. Okay. We have great we'll talk donuts and coffee. Yeah. We'll talk about that at our next. <laughs> talk about that at our next. <laughs> <laughs> at our next meeting, so yeah, see if we can do that. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we're more than welcome. Because otherwise, we're just all sort of operating in boxes. Yeah, yeah. That's, and that, that's, that's the true. problem, I think. Well, that that's the so, problem everywhere. It's isn't so it? spread, yes. and it. I don't want to say it's the same <laughs> thirty-five people <laughs> that are being spread, but the numbers are becoming fewer and fewer. Yeah. And to find somebody to sit on something, you know, it's. Very difficult. Well, somehow there needs to be a way to make these things more attractive. Yeah. Yeah. Do you meet at five? Is that normal for you? Five is a, the five is what we have. Okay. It's what we what we're mandated to have and, and what we have and it works well. It's a nice it's a good working number. Oh five five, five o'clock. o'clock. Oh five o'clock. No, no. We oh, I see. Five. Yes, we started we at five. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. I misunderstood yes. you completely. Because we do four and then we're done or Okay. Maybe we'll do an evening. What what week of the month do you usually meet? Uh, it's up to him. <laughs> well, actually, Mr. Chairman, your committee's going to talk at your meeting on Friday, on Friday. about meeting schedule. So with with brand new members, mm -hmm. um, some are still working. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Honest yep, to goodness, yep. working people. So some of us tired. some of us are still honest to goodness working <laughs> people too. Yeah. So. Likewise. <laughs> <laughs> A retirement is not even an that. option yeah, ever. No, that, no. that, that crossed my mind. Okay. Well, we can coordinate some of that. And yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Good. Great. Anything else on this item? All set. Well, thank you okay. very yeah, much. You. Appreciate the conversation, and I think this is good. Yes. Uh, no, I'm, I'm very pleased. Yeah. Good. And Joe, if you want to stick around, I mean, you can so stick you're, around too. You're we're just, just I'm not. we're just, we're just. Well, I, we just want a little update on on what the selectmen have in mind. And I, I heard, you know, two weeks ago a bit of discussion about some things that they had in mind that they might want to do, and it would be good to hear about them formally. Sure. Um, well, if I may, Madam Chair, that's not how I took that agenda item. I have a few more thoughts, if that's okay. You can have uh, as many thoughts but, as you wish. Uh, thank you. So. Uh, what the board talked about is, as I've been talking about the calendar and starting earlier, um, you know, the board's had conversation and I've said, listen, there are, there are some, uh, let me back up, as a former member of your uh, public body, I take our governing documents very seriously. Um, I know and a town administrator should, but um, as we know from the clerk world, you know, town clerks know the value of the code books and everything else. so. I'm not inclined to say, well, the charter says that, but I'm going to do this. And I've said that to the board. You know, it, it, the honor and respect of our governing documents has to start with the town administrator to set the tone for everybody, but certainly be supported by the elected officials. And so with that, I've said part of the struggles in building a calendar are the disconnects, if you will, that appear within the charter. So they've asked me to identify some of those areas. I told them that I was invited to this meeting because what I've also told the selectmen is perhaps rather than uh, cherry picking portions of the charter that relate to town meeting, to me your discussion on capital is one thing, it's because it's self-sustaining within a certain section of it. Um, my question is, has there been a recent review of the charter? I know in some towns <laughs> it's mandated either every five years, every decade, something like that. Top to bottom every five years. Say again? Top to bottom every five years. Are we coming up on a fifth year or? Well, that depends on when you consider this committee was appointed. That's right. Yeah. Six years ago. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. Less than a year ago. Our first meeting was in well, August. I see what you mean. So it's right. committee dependent, not charter dependent. Well, I, who knows? Um, 
But our last top to bottom review probably goes back a long time. Yep. It's something yes, we've it's been we've yes. had. It's not we're we're aware of it, and right. this seemed like a good starting point. Sure. We can, yep. You know, fan out from there because there are things that probably don't need much review, and we would await your recommendations to incorporate them into any review we do because otherwise we're operating in a vacuum. Right. So, when will you be ready to talk about these things? Um, tonight's opening night of the Howard's Mariners, right. and I promise my, um, I'd be more than willing to come back at a, uh, a very r soon future meeting um, because what I would then ask as the person responsible for building a comprehensive budget, um, is there an appetite for putting in uh, funds within either administration, town clerk, or some other location, a comprehensive review of the charter and the re result in vendors and or funding that needs to support that. A consultant, yeah. perhaps. So we don't have that baked into fiscal year 23, mm -hmm. but if it warrants it, it could become a priority for fiscal year 24. But for me, that would be in partnership with you folks and what you think. That would be, that would, that would be really helpful. I mean, originally we had, when we did the charter, we had Dr. Booth, um, who was our consultant. And uh, he really helped guide the process enormous, enormously. And I don't know if anybody's ever really thought of having a consultant to guide the charter review, but I think it's kind of a, I like the idea of I doing do that. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would so be I'd great. So I'd be more than uh, happy to come back at a future meeting and talk more about that. Okay, how's next month look? Uh, generally when next month? Uh, what's tonight? Tuesdays work very well. Um, vacation scheduled yet until August. We only have 321 days till town meeting, so we really need to get started. <laughs> Thank you for embracing that. July. How about, how about the 12th? You and my dad. I know. <laughs> Everybody has an iPhone. No, this I is a, this is an Android, sir. I, oh, have, I, I oh, strenuously no, ob please. object She's to being identified with an iPhone. This is a calendar, and I'm real proud of it. That's fine. It's Whatever the floats your boat. It's the only thing that works. But no, no iPhone here. Is the twelfth any good for people? July twelfth. July twelfth. Yes. That's just a month. Yeah, particularly if there's any thought of getting something into a fall town meeting, we need to. And I suspect sometime between now July and 12th? July 12th, yeah. five o'clock. That yes. works for me. Here. Okay. Uh, get a hold of Alan and make sure we have the room. Okay. Anything else you'd like to say while you while we have you? you Thanks for go. what you do and uh, the Mariners. Uh, first pitch is in 25 minutes. I was going to say he wants to go get a <laughs> seat. It's what he wants to do. Oh, yeah. We have a great team. Any and this further is be business? A great season. We're already any, 500. I think. All right. All right. Any, anything else anybody wants to talk about, say or do? Okay. Then we are adjourned. Okay. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Coming in. Good to see you. It is 6:05. Yeah. Thank you.